Here we are in the land of the Pettiford family. It's 1990, Minneapolis, Minnesota, the annual jazz party. And in the world of bassists, there's uh, Jimmy Blanton, there's Oscar Pettiford, and there's uh, Milt Hinton, the judge, and there's Keeter Betts, and there's Ray Brown, and here is Keeter Betts. It's good to see you. How did you put me in that big company? That's a big heavy duty up there. <laughs> You're a modest fellow. <laughs> okay. No, it's nice being here. I've enjoyed myself these last few days that I've been here. And I uh, heard a lot of great musicians, you know. And uh, it's good to see it in a city like Minneapolis to have a festival like this. Uh, it's, it brings joy to know that uh, people appreciate music wherever you go. You know? I want to ask you about a very serious project, the Smithsonian Project, and uh, what you can tell us about that. Well... That Smithsonian thing that we did was honoring uh, Ella and, and Milt Hinton that night, and it was actually making them a national treasure, and it worked out very, very well. And they had some, uh, we had some clips from uh, old films that Milt did with, uh, with Cab and some other things, and they had films with uh, Ella did, uh, I think we did it with Duke Ellington's band of a show uh, way back some time ago. And to just acknowledge these people while they are with us and, and uh, for what they've done for music and what they've done for the musical world and the inspiration they've been to other young musicians and singers coming up. And uh, uh, there's, there's still other, there's hundreds of others that would like, I'd like to see, you know, get the same recognition. And there are a lot of people who, uh, a lot of people not even aware of them. And yet they were very instrumental in helping the development of a particular instrument or a particular uh, style of singing or whatever, you know. For you, uh, looking at your career, um, who are those, uh, those people that uh, influenced you? Uh, who, is there anyone in particular that turned you on in your approach to your playing of the bass and your strategy and technique? Well, I was a drummer from the sixth grade until I came out of high school, and then I switched to bass. And I think the person right at that time when I switched to bass uh, in 1946 that really influenced me the most was Oscar Pettiford at that time, uh, because it was just there was something about the way that he played that I really liked, and it seems as though that he breathed, you know, as a horn breathes. And uh, I was heavily influenced by Oscar, and then. Then, you know, the Red Hood Ray Brown and uh, Slam Stewart, I knew that I wasn't, the bow wasn't quite, up, I couldn't quite master the bow, so I couldn't get into the Slam Stewart's thing. But uh, I went in the other way, and I went in like for Oscar, and then I, then I started listening to other guys, taking a little bit from this. You know, when you're molding yourself, you it's like making beasts too. You take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, and so forth, and then you add yourself to it. And uh, and you learn as you as you as you're molding. Yeah. How has the role of the uh, bass changed in in your age and time as you practice in the field? Uh, I'm hoping to say something about that a little later on about how the bass has changed. But actually, you look at how the bass has changed. That if you listen to records done in the 20s, the 30s, the early 40s, you couldn't hear you couldn't hear the bass. It was just more or less felt unless it was featured on a particular thing, then it would come up front. And so the bass was the instrument of uh, the bands or groups that was in the closet. And then it started coming up much louder uh, in the 50s, 60s, and the 70s, and now, up to the 90s, it's come up to the point that the bass is right up front. I had an article, I thought I brought it with me, but I didn't, but it was an article came out in the paper in uh, Silver Spring, uh, Montgomery County actually came out up last month and it dealt with selling cars, that the base now is selling cars. And the car, a friend of mine who's a salesman, he had told me this, but here it was in black and white talking about how now that basically uh, the younger people know approximately what type of car they want in a style, but the first thing they do is they come in and they turn on the radio 
and then they boost up the bass, and if the bass is clear and so forth, they take the car. They care nothing about how much mileage it gets, if the color is right, if the, what kind of, you know, when they want letters, so they just want them because of that. And it went on to tell how they're putting in 10, 24, 6, 32 speakers in their cars just for the bass. And so it's, uh, it's really rewarding to find out that for all of this time that the bass has finally come up, that it is the one that everybody wants to hear, loud and clear. So from the back of the closet to the front lawn.